watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Levy. Episode 73, The Making of Collaboration Today, Part 1. This is an app you do want to pay attention to. Okay, before we get into the, the meat of the show, I, I do have a couple of just little congratulations I'd, I'd like to say. Uh, the first is to uh, basically the community organizers out there. Uh, we're, we're kind of ending, I think, lug season for a little bit. Uh, and MW lug uh, just ended and, and uh, a couple weeks ago, and the UK lug just ended a couple days ago, I think. And uh, and from what I hear from UK lug, which I'd love to get through sometime, they, they did a great job once again. Um, MW Lug was a, a nice conference. It, it's a great thing to do. So if you can, uh, it's they're usually free or, or very low cost, uh, other than travel and stuff like that. It's it's worth your while to try and get out there. And to all the people who take the time to participate in running and setting up and running these conferences, uh, I appreciate it. As does uh, the community. Uh, another big congratulations goes out to uh, my buddy Per Lawston. Um, who's a big contributor to OpenNTF and, and Stack Overflow and some other things like that. And he just passed his X Pages design test. Uh, so he has some form of certification. I haven't even looked at those. So uh, congratulations, Per, and uh, well done. Okay, now uh, getting to uh, the community, a little more about the community and, and the meat of this show, is I want to talk about this new site, collaborationtoday.info. And, and I am so excited about this on, on so many levels. Um, here's a screenshot of kind of what it looks like if you haven't seen it yet. It, it's an aggregator site. So it, it's going to have uh, different articles aggregated from various blogs around the Internet. And it's not like an automatic thing. So it's, it's human controlled. So there's a team in place that that is going to populate these and monitor these etc and, and not only is this gonna the site gonna be a good resource for all these articles or so uh, the, the code for this site is gonna go on up on open source at some point uh, the sooner the, the better to me and and that's what we really want to talk about in this show um, I'm, I'm extremely excited to have a new contributor uh, Nicholas Heidloff is on and he's my first IBM -er ever uh, on notes and nine, so that's that's a kind of a milestone there for me, and and he's a uh, he's on the technical committee chair for OpenNTF, and he just contributes to project after project. I mean that's he's a community guy, uh, so he he did like the original mobile controls experimental project before they went into the extension library. He's doing stuff for this little thing called Connections, of which Connections Four is now out, uh, the Social Enabler. He, he's the, the uh, a big main guy behind xpages.info. He was on the team for X Snippets and Collaboration Today. So he, he's just all across the board here, and he does great stuff. So he is going to come on here with a video on on what this Collaboration Today site is and how, how it works from an end-user point of view um, and how you can, when it becomes open source, download it and kind of get going and set it up and use it yourself. So a couple of things that, that I think you, you really need to watch for is, one, the site just has a nice look and feel. It's, it's got a good UI, but it's also based on responsive design. This responsive design is kind of like, it seems to me, this, this new thing out there, but it's very interesting where where it's it's kind of like it's like websites on a diet. You know, so you might have a big 30-inch monitor or you might have a, you know, a thinner iPhone or, or phone you know display device and the same code works on both very nicely that moves stuff around I don't know how it all works yet but but it seems to be uh, the real deal it seems to be extremely interesting rather than making a site for this device and a site for that device etc uh, he's going to show a little bit how this application works with custom moderators for each different topic and what I'm really kind of interested in when the app comes out too is is what they're doing with these RSS feeds so that they can have like multiple feeds if you want to just subscribe to the connections articles as as opposed to the X pages articles as opposed to uh, Dilbert, I, I don't know, uh, but there's controls in there for that. And they also even have their own API built into this for various things you can do there. So 
So keep an eye for that. And, and, and I already have two shows waiting uh, from Nicholas on more of how the thing was built, um, how they did the click counter, and, and I forget what the other one is. Uh, but there's two more shows at least coming on just this app. I think this is going to be a great app to not only maybe use yourself or, or use on the web you know, in the public version, but to download and to pick apart and see how they do some of these things. So with that being said, let's go to the demo. Hello everybody, Niklas Seidloff here. Recently we launched a new community site called collaborationtoday.info. The site is an aggregator for news about IBM collaboration solutions. The application has been built via X pages by people from the community. Pierre-Henrik Lausten, Sedaj Bajemes, Bruce Elgott, Frank van der Linden and myself. We intend to open source the application soon on openntf.org. As part of David's Drive to 99, I'd like to describe the application in a mini-series of videos. In the first part, I'm going to describe the core functionality, and later I'd like to describe how the app has actually been built. So let's start with the user experience of the readers of collaborationtoday.info. This is the homepage of Collaboration Today. It uses a simple three columns layout. In the left column is a navigator allowing readers to switch between the different pages. In the right column is a list of most recently added news entries. And the middle column contains the actual content, the list of news entries. The content of the news entries is written by various professionals in the IBM Collaboration Solutions community. Collaboration Today aggregates links to these articles. In order to add links to Collaboration Today, we use the concept of moderation. Experts for the different categories or areas can add links to articles and can also place them on the home page. For example, what you see here is what we call spotlight articles. These um, are typically um, high quality articles which remain visible on Collaboration Today for a week or even longer. Good examples for these spotlight articles are product announcements. Below this section is a section that we call Editor's Picks. The moderators can choose which articles to display here. These picks usually change every day or every other day. Each category can contain up to four articles. For example, the AppDev or the Business category contains these four articles. The AppDev category contains these four articles. Now, the um, categories here are the same ones that show up in the left navigator. There are categories for business, app dev, and also infrastructure, user experience, and community. And categories have um, subcategories. For example, app dev has the subcategories X pages, connections, and so forth, allowing users to really filter only the content that they are interested in. So when I click on X pages, I get now a new stream for everything related to X pages. Now, one other page that I wanted to highlight here is the page called Popular. Um, for each click on a news entry on any of our pages, um, we click, uh, we store when this was clicked and we store what IP address clicked it. Now, this allows us to create this um, page um, Popular, where we display the news entries which have been clicked most of the times during the last week. The next thing I'd like to demo is the responsive design. Now, um, this is the um, web user interface. And now you can take a look what happens here when I reduce the real estate. Um, so first of all, the left column disappeared and I can choose or navigate to other categories here now um, at the top. Um, but I still see here the right column. Now, if I even have less real estate, the right column um, will disappear as well. Um, giving me another user interface that fits better on smartphones. Um, and in order to show that a little bit better how it actually looks like on tablets and smartphones, I'm using here this other website, Responsive IS. And here I can choose now the um, tablet user interface in landscape mode, where I still see everything. Um, then when I change the orientation to portrait, um, I only see the two columns, the left column um, was collapsed here. And I can also choose here my smartphone, in which case I see the entries like this. And when I change to um, portrait mode, um, 
this is how I can see now my news entries. And again, I can go to, let's say, X pages category or any other category like this. In addition to that, there is some more user or functionality that readers can use, um, which you can find here at the top. So first of all, there is an about page describing um, the purpose of this website. And the interesting thing here is that it also lists the moderators. And these again, business, app dev infrastructure are the same categories from here. And we store in notes documents the moderators um, of these different categories. And they are the only ones who have access to these categories. And they are listed here um, on the about page. In addition to that, <coughs> there is a contact page um, where users can um, suggest new articles, um, provide any other feedback, change their profile, etc. And um, this page is interesting. It's how you can stay connected or follow um, collaboration today. First of all, there is a Twitter account called Collab Today. Um, and then we have all sorts of feeds for all of these different categories. For example, this is recent news. Um, you can subscribe to them here, for example, using Firefox and then the subscribe to this page um, menu entry. And here are again all of our pages and the categories. Um, in addition to that, there's also um, a widget that you can easily embed in your own um, web pages. Um, so all you need to do here is, let's say, page view source. And you can embed here Dojo if you haven't done that yet. Uh, you need a specific div and to um, you need to include some a JavaScript file in the CSS. And then you basically only set some JavaScript variables um, to define what to show. For example, here's where you can set the different categories. And last but not least, we also have an API allowing you to build your own widgets or embed it in any way you could think of. Um, and here's a very simple example. Again, when I go to view page source, you can see the JavaScript code, the Dojo code that invokes um, a REST um, API, um, api.xsp, and then with some using some parameters. And then it only goes through the JSON and displays all of them. And this is not really beautiful, but it works functionally. Um, and when you go and fire back, you can actually see the, um, the dojo here, uh, the, the JSON data that is returned. Okay, so everything I've demonstrated so far was the user experience for readers of collaboration today. For moderators, there's some more functionality and, and some more pages available. But b before I can see them, I need to define myself as moderator, which I can do here by using the notes ACL. So when I open this up and choose myself, you can see that I have these three roles. Now, everyone who wants to add content to the page needs to be a moderator. And um, all the people who want to define what shows up on the home page need to be spotlight and top moderators. Now, in addition to that, I can also define all the categories that show up in the left navigator here declaratively. So you can easily add one and you automatically get the entry in the navigator. Uh, you automatically get a new feed. You add, um, automatically can use an API to read from your new category. Um, it's all very uh, dynamic. Um, now, for each category or subcategory here, um, I can also define the owners and only these moderators can then actually add content um, to this category. So when I now go back into my web browser and I log in here as Niklas Heidloff um, and then I do a refresh of this page, you can see here a new entry, moderation. Um, and also when I navigate over these icons, I don't only see here these standard share buttons to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, but there's also the um, edit button available here. So I can click on it and it brings me directly to the moderation UI for this particular entry. So here I can define things like the publication date, I can change the title, I can change the author, um, <clears throat> I can define um, the category or subcategory, I can define whether or not to show up on the home page as a top story or spotlight um, story and so forth. Now, what I want to show you next is how easy it is to add something um, to collaboration today. Now, in order to do that, I turn on or make this bookmarks toolbar visible. 
and here I can drag this bookmarklet and drop it on here and now I have this link um, you know always um, and I can easily use it now to add entries to collaboration today by just clicking it so in this case I've opened here an X snippet from OpenNTF and let's say I want to add this entry I say add collaboration today news then it gives me this UI here capture URL I can press the button and now it reads some metadata um, from the website uh, for example the um, uh, the title and so forth now for author I now need to pick um, the author here Tony uh, I can change the uh, type I leave um, I use the type kit X pages and I can change here the abstract um, I can define whether or not to show up um, on the home page and I just say I leave the de all the defaults and then I can say approve and now when I go back you can see this entry here under most recently added um, as well as in the full page mode and when I go to the X pages category I see it here as well. So really easy for moderators to add content to this web page. In addition to that there are some other views for moderators. For example here is a page that allows uh, moderators to easily manage the top stories or what we call editors picks. Um, as well as the four spotlight articles at the top. Um, <clears throat> there's also some other views to uh, navigate through all of the news entries that have been approved, um, to create um, new authors or edit authors profiles. Um, and you can also open this view here, popular, uh, which is um, basically the same one, or it's, it's the exact same data as you can see on the Collaboration Today homepage. But here you can even see as a moderator the clicks, um, um, all time clicks, and the clicks in the last week. In addition to the bookmarklet, there's also basically a schedule task running that reads certain registered blocks and puts these entries into a queue. So here is where all the entries show up that have been read automatically but only moderators can see them, they can tweak them, triage them and then approve them or they just delete them. And in order to show that I want to switch quickly back here to my notes client because here I have a list of registered blocks. At this point there's only three blocks from Bruce, um, Pear and myself. And I can now go to my um, Domino console and I can load, load dots and I can run that particular task, read feeds, which again usually happens on a scheduled basis and I just for the purpose of this demo want to um, trigger it manually. So it tells me that um, three blocks have been read and now when I go back to the website here and um, refresh I see these entries showing up here in my queue and as a moderator I could go in here now, uh, I could check the content, um, in fact didn't want to open the link but the moderation UI here could change the author if necessary the abstract and so forth and then I can finally approve it. This was a quick run through of the functionality available to Collaboration Today readers as well as to moderators. In the next video or videos I want to talk about how we've actually implemented this application. We've used some pretty interesting patterns here and techniques for example, for how we um, store all news entries in memory to be fast enough and to be able to scale. And we've also used an interesting technique, how we store the click counts, um, etc. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for your attention. And that's the demo. Uh, Nicholas, I, I truly appreciate you coming on. I'm, I'm sure a lot of others do. And I look forward to your next show. If anyone has any questions for me, uh, here's my contact information. And I thank you for your time.